Hello everyone and welcome back to Solid State Physics in a Nutshell, brought to you by the Physics Department at the Colorado School of Mines. My name's Eric. And I'm Nicole. Last time, we developed a dispersion relation for a one electron system. Today we'll expand upon that and come up with an expression for the density of states and apply some Fermi Dirac statistics. Recall that we've already talked about the density of states when we talked about phonons and can think of it as the number of states within some DE. So if we know our number of states, all we do is just take the derivative with respect to energy. And we already calculated the number of states for the traveling wave case in the last video by multiplying the volume of the constant energy surface by one k point per spacing cubed, by a factor of two for the two spin states of each electron. We're almost ready to take the derivative, we just need this in terms of energy. And we can get that by solving for k in terms of e from the dispersion relation. And after taking the derivative, we get our density of states normalized to sample volume. So now that we have our density of states, we should look to statistics to see how these states are filled as a function of temperature. To think about that, imagine we have a Fermi gas at zero Kelvin. Our system will have n electrons, and we can calculate that by integrating over the density of states times this occupation probability. This looks very similar to how we treated phonons. Yeah, it is, but instead of the Planck distribution, we'll use the Fermi-Dirac distribution since electrons are fermions. And what's nice is that because we're dealing with fermions, to imagine how the states get filled, imagine our density of states is like this massive bucket. When we pour electrons into the system, they'll start by filling in the origin and move out. And no two electrons can occupy the same state. How high in energy do the electrons fill this bucket? It depends on the material for what that number is. Generally, we're going to define whatever that maximum value is, as the Fermi energy. But Eric, this is all at zero Kelvin. Obviously that's not the temperature we do experiments at. No, and that's reflected in the Fermi-Dirac distribution. At zero Kelvin, we have our nice step function, with unity up until the Fermi energy, and then zero. As we go up in temperature, we start to see a smearing of this line. And that represents electrons moving up in energy due to thermal fluctuation. Since we have to conserve the total number of electrons, the electrons that move up leave unoccupied modes at lower energies. Well, that wraps up today's video. We hope you enjoyed the short description of the electronic density states and the Fermi-Dirac distribution. Here's a question which should help make the transition from phonons to electrons a little smoother. Compare and contrast phonons in a harmonic lattice with the free electron model. Next time, we'll use our understanding of density of states and the Fermi-Dirac distribution to investigate the electronic contribution to the heat capacity. See you then.